Let's see. Okay. Okay, so <laughs> that's interesting. Um, I've been presenting basically for myself for a, an hour, it seems, without kind of like realizing that. Okay, um, <laughs> um, it, this is a kind of like a very um, so you guys are just seeing the video can you kind of just uh, film that finally you can see the video hello okay with the uh, with the uh, one hour <laughs> almost one hour I'm going to present again uh, thank you so much and so sorry about the problem it seems that um, for some reason um, I was uh, not aware that I'm not I was I was seeing myself doing stuff but it was not working so anyway um, hello everyone my name is Mohammed Mudaris um, uh, thank you so much for waiting and uh, tuning in into my uh, stream this is my first stream uh, seems like there was a problem uh, all the time um, I would like to thank uh, Bobby Chiu and Jim and everybody at the um, Lightbox Expo for doing this um, so without further ado after one hour delay um, I'm going to talk about uh, some of the stuff so my background I studied um, handicraft back in Iran um, and you can see this is uh, basically um, my love of um, like a medal uh, you can see it's evident in the line of my work um, I'm a, right now I'm a uh, senior character artist at the Facebook um, before that I started when I relocated to United States I started as a, a sculptor as a toy sculptor and uh yeah that's that's right jessica <laughs> the first hour was <laughs> the first hour was um the practice or rehearsal <laughs> thank you so much for um waiting um i hope that you guys are still there i see so i see you guys um appreciate it very much um so yeah i was working at mcfarland toys it's also showing a, a very um, interesting contrast between the line of my work. Um, uh, this with the current line of my work. Um, at McFarland Toys, I learned tons about the, like how I can cut the model, how I can uh, basically do more bolder details and um, I also learned this uh, lesson to be flexible and by flexibility you can get a lot more diverse projects so uh, these are some of the stuff that I have been done during my VFX time uh, when I uh, joined first at Luma Pictures and then go for a position at the ILM uh, XLab uh, which is a, a VR part of the or division of Industrial Light and Magic. Um, I th I should say that I'm um, I'm proud of the stuff that I have done. 
uh, during my VR and VFX time, um, I think the most proud moment for me was working on Irishman. And uh, even though that I didn't get a credit, which is a, which is a norm when um, there is a cutoff time and I was working less, uh, like my time was less than the, the cutoff time. So um, uh, let's go to the next. Um, these are some of the shots that I was working during my time on Wrinkle in Time. And um, this project started as like, oh, we have some like a facial and then they started to, oh, let's change the eyes and the, a lot of details of the approved model. And we had like a three month to get to final. So um, it, was, it was a learning uh, experience for me. <clears throat> um, so from Lightbox Expo 2019 and 2020, what happened? Basically, this is the movie that it's a portion of the stuff that I have been done so far uh, from Lightbox 2019 and 2020. I was kind of down um, feeling that everything is not working. Uh, I, I, at some point I was thinking that maybe I should change even my, um, uh, career or go do something else. And then I decided to let's go and, um, uh, just go for Lightbox Expo. It was first year and, uh, it was amazing. It was so impactful. I came back and I decided I wanted to buy a 3D printer. I bought the uh, Frozen Shuffle XL, even though that I didn't know anything about the 3D printing. And I started to do my own, more of my own design. So uh, jumping on it, uh, what's, the, what's the deal with this triangle? I think um, Geo is... Um, <laughs> curious to know about the uh, Y triangle so it's a catchy name but basically triangle are special because they are exceptionally strong they are simplest polygons they are also very important in building our physical and virtual world as you see if you if you look at any 3d models it consists of triangle and uh, basic polygon consists of two triangle. Uh, also in our structures, it is very important. So what it means for me, uh, by the way, this is my character um, uh, drawn by my good friend, Mehrdad Svandi. Um, he's a, a art director at the um, uh, uh, Disney Animation Studios. And as you see, so this is what I uh, define myself as an artist with. It is a triangle, it's a strong forms, drawing, traditional sculpting and digital uh, sculpting is the tree edge of this uh, thing that I wanted to improve. And I've been trying since I started, since maybe 16 years ago, um, when I was a, a teenager, some somehow a teenager back in Iran, I decided to have a plan. And my plan was to be better at drawing, be better at the traditional sculpting and also digital sculpting. So um, um, let's go to drawing. So for drawings, uh, my drawings, uh, so what drawing means to me? It is very primitive uh, medium that we all start with as a kid. It's like a foundation of, or uh, for the structure, it's like a, basically when you, when you wanted to do a blueprint, it is something that you should do. It's also the fastest way to bring a, an idea to life. Um, 
even even faster than digital 3D or something. It is something that I've been trying to get better and better. These two uh, are basically my um, uh, animal scope, uh, animal drawing back in 2018. A lot of ideas, a lot of like studies, uh, working based on other artists. You can see some of the drawings after Bugatti and other uh, artists. So usually uh, uh, my drawings are uh, consists of an, uh, anatomy studies, life drawings, and uh, sketchbooks, which I had this um, like a tendency to have like a different sketchbook book for different subject matter. Like all of my portraits should be on one sketchbook. All of my drawing, um, like animal drawing, should be on that, and I put uh, different uh, stickers on that. I haven't done drawing as much as I should do or used to but that's something that I would love and also one thing that I'm very very thankful from my uh, previous employer Industrial Light and Magic we had this uh, drawing class every Wednesday for uh, like all of my doing all of uh, the time that I was there about like four years and it's been there for I think more than 14 years also sculpting which I'm going to talk a little bit about that as well um, so continuing on the uh, drawings these are some of the drawings that I did um, based on Bridgman and each time that I have a problem in my anatomy, I'm kind of like refer back to pen and paper and Bridgman. Bridgman is something that I feel that's like everyone should do. I did uh, like a, maybe four of his book on this sketchbook. As you see, uh, I have this plan to do the digital sketchbook of Bridgman someday. Maybe we, we guys can do all together. So, about the traditional sculpting, um, I started uh, traditional sculpting back in Iran, but it was hard to find the teacher, medium, like a, the actual clay. So I got more serious about sculpting when I got here, especially when I uh, started attending uh, Pixar Sculpting Jam which is also running by one of the ILM uh, um, model supervisor by name of Lenny Lee. He's been doing this for, I don't know, like a, more than 15 years and also drawing. So that's something that I learned from him and other people that drawing is the foundation. Sculpting is, it's, it's very, very important. It's also, I had a very hard time uh, since I came from digital to traditional sculpting, making the stuff symmetrical, it's not easy when, uh, when you're coming from digital. The other thing is uh, uh, traditional sculpting needs uh, a lot more patience and time and dedication and a space. That's the space is a very, very important thing. Um, if you if you don't have a space uh, maybe it's hard or maybe you should kind of like do very very small stuff so um, so one of my struggles and I still have this struggle is it's kind of like making symmetrical forms in real life because it seems that my mind uh, programmed since I was a power user of 3d sculpting for a long time um, in a way that it was hard for me to grasp the uh, like a just uh, turning stuff in a space how how stuff really turn and um, I feel that like we should all start from basic basic we should start and I should start doing a cube and sphere like an actual sphere uh, in a uh, with the clay which is a very very important we usually wanted to jump oh i wanted to do the 
like a portrait or figure or something. One other thing about the uh, uh, traditional medium is I feel that uh, you cannot cheat. If you don't know about the medium, if it's going to evident in your work, and uh, so far it's a very very humbling experience i should say it's something that like a, like when you're working on a digital uh, medium after a while you kind of like oh i can do whatever but what if you turn on symmetry turn off symmetry or you just start doing um digital uh, uh, traditional and it's going to, believe me, it's a very, very humbling uh, experience. Uh, so jumping on a digital sculpting, uh, also my digital sculpting, um, I, I'm kind of like have this idea of like, a, so consists of different, um, different parts and uh, categories. Uh, a part of my work is uh, form studies. As you see, this top part is exactly after uh, doing uh, stuff um, with the bridgeman. Uh, another one is original works. I started to do more original works back in 2018. I was a modeler uh, and I still I am a modeler, but I was more kind of like rely on other people ideas. I wanted to just um, translate that into 3D. And um, I started after doing a lot of drawings and drawings, I start to just a little bit believe on myself that hmm, maybe I can design as well. So this series is a mask series. I'm a huge fan of mask. Um, I have a huge collection of uh, like at least the pictures of Afri African mask or other nation mask. You can go and find in my Pinterest. Um, this series also is more kind of like a cute vinyl type um, um, toys. Uh, this this little fella called Tambal Bache. It's a it's an Iranian name. Um, it's a it's a kind of like a cute name uh, for this character. Uh, it's a slot. Um, and also other part of my work is doing some um, basically um, narrative or a storytelling parts that I'm trying to get better and better at it, at it. I'm still doing collaboration and working uh, like uh, just asking other artists if they are okay for me time to time to uh, translate their work. This one is based on amazing um, drawing by Eliza Iwanova, which I'm a huge, huge fan. Uh, this is also based on uh, amazing Claire Wenderling um, sketch. The one, uh, one small um, thing that I removed was there was a dead bird on this story that uh, this kid was uh, crying because of that. I didn't want to incorporate that one, at least onto, into my work. So that's the only change that I did. But one thing that I learned basically when I'm translating other people with a different uh, design sensibility is A, I learn, I learn to design. At the same time, I'm kind of like sending this message to my potential client that hey I can be flexible I can do a lot of different um, styles so um, that's about uh, digital stuff I'm going to jump uh, on 3d printing 3d printing for me is like a missing link between all of this stuff also there is a story a small story I'm going to say it fast one of my teachers slash friends, um, Alicia Ponzio, once uh, asked me, so why you decided to do sculpting uh, like traditionally or how come? And I was in a moment was like, um, I 
been away from my family for a long time. Like been, it's been nine years that I'm away from them. And there are a lot of stuff happen in my personal life that having the touch became something very, very important for me. So at, at some point I was like, just having a 3D renders is not uh, satisfying me anymore. And I wanted to have uh, more um, interaction with my own design or my creation. So I think 3D printing in some way helping me. I was working on drawing, which is a traditional medium, working on uh, sculpting, traditional sculpting. And then with the 3D printing, I realized that, oh, I can kind of like do all of this stuff as well. So one thing that I forgot to talk is this, uh, this uh, presentation consists of three parts first is um, just um, this uh, um, slides and then I'm going to show show and tell some of my work and then if we have time and you guys are not kind of like mad at me uh, I'm going to do a, a small demo as well so let's talk a little bit about the uh, inspiration um, I usually go for um, some fine art um, idols and um, one of my current favorite or um, the person that I'm kind of like inspiring a lot recently is an animalier um, sculptor by name of Francois Pompon and he is uh, he's such an amazing sculptor. I feel that um, like we should show and talk about his work more than other. I mean, uh, everyone knows Rodin, and there is a reason for that. But uh, also, I think figures like Bugatti and Pompom and also Edward Marcel Santos are also. Uh, they have some amazing body of work. So one thing that I'm trying to learn from Pom Pom is basically simplicity and clarity of their silhouettes, uh, of his silhouettes. The way he's kind of like just make his stuff um, more simple, but it's still there. That's one thing that I wanted to push into my design or learn from it. This figure, Edward Marcel Santos, is also very interesting. You see that the same similar uh, subject matter. This one is more kind of like art deco uh, with the very, very sharp forms. And this is more kind of like realistic. So I like to see what happened between these years. I'm actually starting to reading about their life. Which is I'm also um, recommend if somebody into this stuff. Also, um, the two other figures um, that I wanted to talk about is T. S. Sullivan and Hernish Clay. These two gentlemen, um, the first guy, is basically what you see from Disney, and Disney style is evident in his work. And um, I'm kind of like trying to incorporate the appeal and the design of his work into my work as well. So that's one thing. Um, Henry Schele is also um, very, very important figures. Basically, um, Fantasia uh, formed based on some of his uh, sketches or the design sensibility of him so that's that's the first part let's go to the second part <laughs> it's interesting that i did all of this at once and i was like okay wasn't we are we were not or i were not aware that i'm not um online 
Okay. Um, so, so let's go for this first, actually. So Daydreamer uh, is one of my recent project. I finished it, I think, several months ago. And um, it started, usually my, my personal work starts from a piece of music or a conversation or something that impacted my life. I don't exactly remember the, the event on this. I had the conversation with someone, with actually with the model, the, the person that I kind of like model the face of this girl. And it was more kind of like, okay, I see a picture of a girl because I'm kind of like daydreaming a lot with the goldfish. Initially, it was a goldfish. And I was like, okay, uh, that's a kind of like interesting idea how I am going to just... Uh, every time that I'm also doing a 3D right now, I'm also thinking about engineering it and how I'm going to 3D print it, how it's going to... Because I'm not... Like, it is very easy to suspend um, a model in the space like this as it's started but how it's going to work if you wanted to do in real life so anyway um started from the goldfish and this is basically also showing my inside my mind a little bit i am a huge fan of museum this art were taken in 2018 at the metropolitan museum of new york and I'm, I'm kind of like, what if I put this detail into a model like this and do a render? And that's basically what it started. So this piece is also amazing piece by Bernini uh, at the Getty Museum. Um, that it caught my eyes. I was like, Wow, it, this is so amazing. As you see, it's a, like a scratch that I decided to go for more uh, bolder shape. Um, this is a dolphin. Uh, and one, one interesting thing, have you guys noticed that how much this Duffy dog is look like a, this sculpture? And I'm wondering that if it's intentional or something, somebody maybe took some inspiration from this. Because this was done like at least 400 years ago, something like that, at least. Um, anyway, uh, jump on, jump back on the art project. So I uh, decided to go for an eel instead of the fish then decided to go for a very simple um, silhouette rather than to go for some uh, complicated because this model was uh, complicated in terms of like a visual uh, forms wanted to go for something to ease the eye so I, I didn't want to add uh, crazy details on that one. Uh, texturing was done in uh, Substance Painter and I'm going to show um, also this piece of software um, that let's see it's called Maverick Render. It's a it's a new renderer um, that I start falling in love with it. I don't get any um, any promotion or anything from them. I decided to hey let's um, let's just um, also bringing this uh, at at some way it's look like a key shot, but it's a GPU render. Um, trying to find the model. 
if I can. Yes. Okay, so as you see here, this is the real time. I can go for lights and change it to something very strong, which I don't like, but anyway, um, just for sake of showing to you guys how it's working. Um, it's a very, very good tool. One interesting thing about Maverick is whatever you see inside Substance Painter, you can bring it with the same fidelity here in um, Maverick. Uh, so definitely check that out. Also, they have some interesting backplate. It's it's not backplate. It's more um, HDRI. I'm going to change this one. Talking about uh, the design part of this, this is the starting point of this character. And it's a start to go for this one, go for this, then this. I'm trying to show you the stages. Um, here I decided to let's go for something symmetrical and then boom put it together and then this this is a big jump i know it's a big jump between the first um the previous stage but i don't have any other stages of this one to show but let's let's go to some interesting stuff maybe for you guys um scales how i did the scales it's a very very easy techniques uh probably a lot of people know about this so in a surface noise if you have a tileable alpha you can go and add and also you need to have a good uh uv layout so this is something like a finer or whatever. Um, I did this and then as you see, there is a seam here. So I create a new layer, fix that. Then transition was more kind of like adding those grooves to it. But still it's not, a, it's not Really, you don't, you didn't know that uh, you are, I think Gio is, <laughs> Gio uh, is kind of like messing with me. Uh, no, it was basically all um, using this techniques. This is amazing if you also using uh, um, with the morph target. If you have a morph target, you, uh, you can kind of like get rid of all the stuff. So anyway, on the tail, I added um, the transition for the tail. Then for the tail, I thought that it was not, it's kind of like dull and I didn't like it. So that's one of my favorite tools in ZBrush. This is a brush that I've been using a lot. Um, it's called um, Spiral and it's adding so much movement into it the same thing that you could find in uh, for instance bernini um, i'm also using layers so it's kind of like easier to go forth and back um, then other than adding some other details and then that's it that's the, the our model one thing that I also offer this is a this is a brush that I created uh, uh, and it, you can actually get it for free. I'm going to give uh, the the code, the coupon that you can get. This is 
this is one of the brush that I made for for cross hatching um, let's see if it's actually yes yeah that's working so see it's um, it's you can kind of like go and do this the good thing about okay so one thing that you should be mindful about this tools is because the brush is based on like a, its base type is magnify it's also bulging your model so be aware of that but other than that instead of going for for instance dan standard which everyone almost using including me and then adding um like a you can do it with this and it's giving some don't overuse it because if you <laughs> overuse it everything is going to look like this um yes you can get the brushes um i'm going to um and also i'm offering one of my uh, base models as a free so you can if you go to my booth like my virtual booth it's 920 and click on it it's directing you to uh, uh, I think it's going to be a store or something um, I feel it's uh, uh, gum road yes I forgot the gum road name so um, for the for the model the coupon the coupon code you need to it's number 3 mm lbx 20 so it's number three mm um, lbx 20 for fishman and uh, for the other one for the brushes i put uh, also a coupon it's free for everyone attending uh, lightbox it's uh, three mm lbx two zero one yes so so um so jumping on other stuff please um if you if you print uh the model please uh send um like a result to me i would love to see um anyway uh jumping on the other one let's see how much time we have Hopefully you guys are not uh, not exhausted or something. Anyway, let's start from this guy. Uh, so Toto, um, let's go for this guy here. So Toto started um, basically. Um, I wanted to do something fun and also with this idea of someone getting good vibe or like a giving a good uh, thing to uh, other people this this figure to me symbolize uh, it's he's look like a, a Prometheus he's kind of like giving a light and um, also uh, light to people he's a cheerful cute I mean um, I should not <laughs> I should not call my uh, character cute but anyway I wanted to create something uh, that people kind of like uh, and have uh, have a good feeling looking at him uh, other thing is I went for some crazy uh, design shapes on this one so as you see um, it is have it has having some like a yin and yang elements especially when you look at the profile you see uh, like a um, just um, this uh, silhouette or uh, negative silhouette so it's inspired by a uh, Persian motif 
It's called, uh, I think it's called Paisley in English. Paisley, yeah. We call it Botajeke, and I wanted to have this in, incorporated into my design. I was not thinking about this. I realized some of this stuff after. Like, why I kind of like doing this? Why I um, like adding uh, this type of stuff? It's also showing a duality of. For me, it's like a duality of a love. You have to have a two opposite force in order to be one in love. I don't know if it makes sense, but are also inspired by a Persian, like old locks. There are some like a locks that I kind of like. It was in back of my mind. I'm not so. Uh, there's there's a there's opposite thing about these two projects. This one I was thinking about all of this. On this one, when I design and finish it, and then I look at it, I was like, hmm, this is uh, this is some some of the stuff that it was on my head. Anyway, um, just jumping. Uh, this is the model that um, I'm offering. To you guys um, just download it and uh, have fun um, just uh, if you print it uh, let me know uh, I would love to see your prints your coloring it whatever you do with it um, so let's go with this one and so Toto or Toropche started with this Lot of my stuff start with the sphere, and then it's changed to this shape. Then uh, I'm going to jump on semi-final. Um, I also have this tendency to duplicate my design in order to show. Yeah, maybe it's kind of like look cute. I was like, no, I don't want it to go for a cat or something. I just I don't like to go to that one especially so this is the final model uh, as you see uh, in the silhouette it's it has this paisley shape in it or um, some other shape um, let's see yes we can we can also see him and Maverick um, I love playing with Maverick a lot as you can tell um, I also have a tendency to go for a simple color for a lot of my toy design um, um, I decided to go for blue which is uh, my favorite color and um, that's about it for the showing show and tell so if you guys okay we can yeah so they ask how we, how can we find the brush so if you go to um if you go to my booth virtual booth it's 920 number um it's, where's the number 920 yeah um go to that and just go click on exclusive content it's going to directing you to uh, those brushes there's two brushes for now I'm going to um, uh, yes basically wraps is kind of like telling uh, what I'm trying to tell you uh, you can kind of like put the coupons and get the get the brushes and also the model Anyway, let's jump on something and finish this uh, live stream. Uh, so I did something. I started this um, and I'm going to sculpt. Don't worry about that. I'm not going to cheat. Uh, going to show my stuff um, the way I'm working. So, so basically 
this sculptress is a very very important aspect of my current workflow um it became um it became very very important um during the the uh the design i as i told you guys i have this tendency to duplicate my work because because i'm kind of like i'm finding some oh this is interesting this is also maybe a little interesting so let's duplicate that one as well so i i i'm going to duplicate it so the base brushes that i'm using uh, is uh clay build up clay build up is my favorite brush there is also one thing that i'm doing uh, and i'm changing i also switching between regular clay build up and something that i learned from um geo so i should credit him uh, this is with the alpha 48 it's giving you a very interesting uh soft forms but what i add to this workflow is basically a lot of times i'm using um uh shift with this as a destructive way to kind of like see if i have uh, all my shapes in there or no it's like as you see you can see a hint of like a um instead of squeezing my eyes i'm kind of like doing this and sometimes i use this as um like a razor like when you go small you can uh, I'm going to switch and show you so you can go for detail right but if you go big you can tessellate you can have like a finer or um, less detail a lot of stuff that we see we don't need a thousand like a polygons you just need a clean forms and this is giving me that opportunity another uh, tools that i'm using is uh, uh, damn standard but in like a with the like an intensity like a 10 or 8 or something sometimes it's not working very well with this um, sculptress but still i i find that um it's uh, it's quite interesting to work and you know this process is a little destructive because it's you need to go through and clean up your forms but it's give me more design um like uh, decisions or design choices like a uh, one or two go for maybe a neck or something or a shape if i feel that this is uh this is uh too convoluted i'm going to clean it up and start over um like uh Sometimes when I'm working, I forget to talk. <laughs> that's uh, that's especially happening, I think, right now. I'm trying to be talkative. Um, so see, um, a lot of times, I'm kind of like, uh, I need a little bit more detail here. So I'm going, uh, instead of going for subdivisions or anything, it's... Um, I'm going to do that and this is um, this is a process of refining um, refining and then distracting I feel that it's um, somehow helping me to get to better forms um, this is also too graphic for my taste um, see if we have 
Yes. Uh, thank you so much, Gio. Um, a lot of stuff that I learned uh, about the hierarchy of forms coming from uh, Gio and um, also the combination of what I learned from him and also what I learned from Lenny Lee in uh, traditional sculpting. It's, it's somehow kind of showing me uh, the way. So as you see, uh, it's getting somewhere. Um, going to use dam. Um, and see, so you add this, right? With the bigger one, you can even tessellate and it's, it's going to destruct your sh forms but also showing some really interesting uh, new stuff. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go for a smaller and then with the smaller shapes, I'm going to Um, hopefully you guys are enjoying it so far I know it's uh, here in uh, it's 10.44 I know it's such a such an interesting story I'm going to tell everyone what I did um, for an hour <laughs> I was uh, demoing for myself. Um, so, um, this is getting somewhere. I feel that it's going to be somewhere, but I might doing this um, for sake of this demo and not going. But this try. Let's try this uh, saving project. Oh. Hopefully, uh, we are not going to. I'm so happy to um, see all of your comments. Um, as you can see, this is my very, very first ever um, um, live. So thank you so much for being with me with a lot of like a technical stuff. Um, you have to wait for um, like a project in progress, hopefully. Um, it's not going to, um, taking so much. In meantime, if you guys have any question, uh, let me know. And thank you so much, Mason. Um, thank you very much. I'm going to read all of the comments later uh, I mean I'm going to interact and talk hopefully answer some uh, questions um, going to okay so so let's come back to the demo for some some stuff I feel that like see this is not working like this previous shapes are it's not kind of like interesting so what I did it was basically not only smoothed but also tessellated but we still have some sign of work this is uh this is something that kind of like helping to find uh, new shapes um i'm also going to let's to do this 
Um, I know I, I rotate my model a lot, which is very important. Um, I hope I can not just only looking at it, but doing stuff. But also one lesson I learned and I should say is uh, a lot of time we do more than we look especially when working with the real model um, so it's good to also work on our observation um, hopefully you guys enjoying it so far um, so one thing is um, if you hide the part of your model this is not working back face mas mask is also not working uh, as you see it's turned off so um, just be aware of this uh, stuff but uh, um, these tools and um, I feel that it's very soft everything is kind of like a mushy and soft so I need to do um, this this is also I know a lot of people know this but if you put the alt and go for move F alt it's going to just uh, move it into direction of your the surface normal which are using a tons while working usually you have to go into the side or something or the view and see but with this you can go something like this i mean i'm not going to do that but anyway um also going for less intensity um this is um also interesting i'm going to let other people like people in the um in this uh live stream decide for the name of this uh fellow uh if you guys have any um save just in case oh I did the uh, yeah a lot of stuff is happening um, just uh, if you have a suggestion for name for this level I mean it's he's he's or I mean seems like a he or um, I don't know like let's not decide for the gender right now um, but uh, let's decide the name you guys you guys should go for the name for this um, and I feel that like yeah, let's go for um, one other thing is about my inspiration I got a lot of um, inspiration from uh, plants and I would love to incorporate uh, plant um, shapes into uh, my visual vocabulary so as you see i was like this this one is too much so i went and tessellated and then i'm going to create more cleaner shapes um, Yeah, it's I know it's it's a lot easier. <laughs> uh, making a close eyes is a lot easier, but how we can create the open eye or something? Um, I I'm still using. Uh, uh, nope, no, I didn't like it. So. Let's stay with that. Um, 
So the corner of the mouth is also very interesting. Uh, is something I don't know if you guys um, just uh, notice that for some people there is a, there is a rhythm. It's kind of like going down and then go up. It's events for some people. It's it's going like this and then I'm going to do this then here I'm going to do this the good addition to ZBrush is this um, like a silhouette you can see if your silhouettes are strong or um, like a, if, if you can go for stronger or something. Um, so I like this, uh, this flow of the character. Um, also it's good to sometimes talk about with yourself, um, Critic your work when you um, do it. Don't feel that it's your children and like, oh, that's I cannot do this. And I start over and over. It This is digital. Um, we can literally save thousand uh, copy of each shape. So don't attach to the one idea. That's that I think. Uh, very important thing um, let's see wow we have a lot of like a do you clean up the topology at any point when you are sculpting or do you leave the topology okay so that's that's actually very interesting Armando um, asked about the topology what's my method okay I'm going to show on the total how I'm kind of like uh, work on it this is uh yeah so when i roughly about the 70 percent of my design i duplicate it and uh, create a, a copy um, zero measure it i'm not going to do it here but basically zero measure and for my designs and then reproject all of the stuff in subdivision and then start to clean up. This cleanup is not with the uh, sculptors. Uh, I might go and do another live uh, later to show how I um, clean up my stuff. For my um, uh, mask, one thing that I can tell you is when I reproject all of this stuff, um, I go for morph target, create a morph target, create a layer. And then there is something hidden. A lot of people don't know. I mean, people that been doing ZBrush, they know this clay polish, use clay polish for some stylized stuff and then switch back and forth between morph target and you you can see the 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 result so that's answering that question it's back to this guy um yeah awesome awesome thank you very much um Okay, I'm seeing a lot of names. Mumtia. If you guys have a, a suggestion for the name, just tell me what's the origin of the name, like where does this come from? Uh, other idea that I have is, um, and I might kind of like going to do this, is usually we we have a description or design 
or something that's kind of like telling oh we have an ogre we have a big one is a is a lonely blah blah thing but what if me as a designer sculpt something and you guys come up with the story of him her or them uh, that's something that i would like to um go for it um it is something that definitely worth to try it um let's see what time is it so yeah it's uh round 11 here let's see i might do a little bit more maybe 10 15 minutes depending on um if everybody's want to stay um and um yeah my instagram and my twitter is number 3mm like a 3mod as you see here um you can also find me in artistation basically uh, all, everywhere um i recommend everyone to also take a look at my pinterest because it's um i'm uh, selecting um and adding a lot of stuff different stuff um into my pinterest so definitely worth check that out um i i kind of like like the the follow of this this started this one started as like a silver back gorilla and um it's a little bit look like a, um, a fish or something like a man fish um maybe i would go for some uh drastic change because that's that's what i usually do it's um it's what i like to do is um definitely go for some visual cues um, and there are lines um, I feel one of the designers that I can recommend everyone to look and for the follow of the work is basically look at the Carlos Huantes um, stuff amazing in terms of like a rhythm and follow and also um, in in 3d artist uh, I feel that uh, we we also have a lot of uh, great artists that you can see and check definitely check uh, Geo's Geo uh, he he doesn't need my uh, introduction everybody knows him but yeah in terms of like uh, how everything is kind of like uh, working together one uh, one other secret I mean it's not a secret I also started to look at the Persian calligraphy as something that can helping me into designing even uh characters so definitely check those stuff um there are a lot of people think that when when you when you going for a design you should go for just animal i feel that um why it's very important and big part of my portfolio consists of animals you should be able to uh for instance uh take a lot of inspiration from fruits which i'm also doing um in some of my work um, so definitely just go for different approaches um going to Mm, 
not sure about this part, what's happening here, but uh, maybe I will find it later. Um, let's see. Yeah, he's he's kind of like a look like alien. Um, so also let me know how's your experience so far from Lightbox. Um, it's uh, it's been amazing, uh, amazing uh, lineup of artists. Everyone is amazing. So such a great honor to be part of this um, event. Hopefully we will meet in person next year. Okay, let's see. Yeah, we have 10 more minutes. Oh, that's... Uh... That's interesting, Ghazale, uh, uh, about Brizo. I don't know in what, which language. Um, um, it means um, uh, goddess of sailors. Um, hello, Jenny. Um, <laughs> so we don't speak Arabic, but we understand your Habibi. Um, you can use salam or <laughs> some other stuff, but <laughs> yeah, that's uh, as a friend. Dust means uh, habibi in Farsi. So um, thank you very much. Um, there are also some stuff that I wanted to add. So here, everything is kind of like a. There is no visual interest on this. So one of the thing is it like it maybe change of the plane in a silhouette and then like it trying to like maybe find I mean don't if you go ornamental with the design it's going to be look like stylish very stylish even I mean this is also stylish but I when I'm going for uh, ornamental forms, I mean, um, you should be aware that uh, you still need to create believable forms. Uh, this is also, I realized that this is um, um, not, not in a good shape. So one thing that I can do is go with this build up and find this corner uh, in, uh, as you notice when I'm using bigger I'm kind of like also eliminating some forms which is good it's kind of like uh, Let's let's go for something. So this is <laughs> that's interesting. When when you do this, it definitely became look like a fish or even um, like a bird or something. But I don't want it to go for that one. But let's see. What we can do. Okay, thank you, Azole. Okay, that's. Let's go for something a little drastic and see if we can go. Um, I 
I can't believe that I I did this um, at least I was like oh what should I do but it seems that when you do um, like a live you can just go crazy and make stuff up um, I I think I'm going to save this and let's also uh, one other thing is with this let's add this and, and. sure um, still need this um, thank you Pedro um, This is make this a little like more human, but um, I feel that it's um, ah, I still can't believe that I, <laughs> I was doing a demo one hour for myself. <laughs> uh, um, one thing that I wanted to talk a little is um, during the interview this is just like um, a pro tip for the working be critical about your stuff and your um, progress but don't be too harsh with yourself and too critical um, during your interview because uh, if you pass this idea that hey, this guy or this gal is not sure about um, his or her ability you are not going to get the job be confident but not super confident like a, oh I know everything uh, that's not gonna work be a team player um, it is very important also to we have four more minutes uh, it is very important to be a team player and showing the sign that you are getting along pretty good okay um, let's see if you guys have any question please please uh, let me know um I would like to answer at least some of the questions thank you Sarah um, I hope you I hope you are doing great with the uh, um with the light box and um, hopefully we'll see a lot of amazing work of all of you after this um, um, light box event so um, one thing before I finish this is a this is this is not good because this line kind of uh, just uh, create some we need to create some passage and maybe create more forms um, maybe like this also I would love if you guys go and describe what this character is uh, his personality or her or 
their personality um, just something fun I would like to interact with the people about that do you have any advice for getting started in traditional sculpting yes so definitely uh, read Edward Lantery's book uh, it's hard to uh, understand especially my, for me that uh, English is not my first language it's written with the old language so definitely go for Lantry also try to take a class with Brian Buta Craig um, he's an amazing teacher amazing human being I had the chance to have a um, workshop with him and start um, just simple have fun that's very very important okay um, Let's see, do you have any advice? Okay, um, what make you interested again when you get disappointed from work? That's interesting question, um, Ghazal. So I feel that uh, A, uh, when I went to uh, Lightbox last year, I saw a lot of peers, like, a, like people that I know and admire and I see that sheer joy of like making and creating and i decided yeah let's uh let's do it so that's the that's that's one thing um yeah that's that's also okay so you're interested in it okay can you have a concept art portfolio made in 3d yes you can um the the thing is a lot of people started to incorporating uh, like a, a 3D as a designing tools and why not you can you can do whatever you want but I should say this there is a there is a fine point just not jump straight on ZBrush and do a stuff and f think that oh, okay this is a good concept art uh, in some cases uh, it is but I feel that um, it is very very important if you go for principle first that's why you kind of like start with the shape silhouette I'm saying this is stuff as a non-designer I don't believe I am designer but um, so yeah any ad okay it's okay to get okay. Uh, any advice on how to get started with the learning human anatomy so it's not so around? Yes, Armando. So um, one thing that I would recommend is go for um, um, Bridgman. Uh, start with the Bridgman. Bridgman is a little bit also tricky. If you, I, I think Proco has this video about learning um about Bridgman so definitely check that one you need a mentor you need someone to kind of like telling you um, no that's that's not a good um, that's not a good uh, anatomy reference for you or n not good for your stage so that's something that I would recommend find a mentor there are a list of books I think it's on my Facebook, my personal Facebook, but I'm going to post it on my page. I have a Facebook page, Muhammad Modaris Art. You can um, more than welcome to follow and like. Uh, so definitely go to that one. If I have time, I would uh, uh, like respond to people. Um, how do you consider anatomy and form shape for this kind of amazing art at the same time? It is a little. Um, I don't don't exactly know what do you mean by that, Muhammad. How do you consider anatomy and form shape for this kind of amazing art? At the same time, uh, I don't know exactly what you are referring. Um, uh, let's see. Do you think a three D modeler should know professional about rendering software for preview? yes definitely uh, try to learn the process uh, it is not um, 
is not enough in my opinion to just uh, know modeling or sculpting right now you you should know more than one thing you should know modeling <clears throat> texturing uh, and also look development when you do look development of your work you are going to understand oh um, that's my problem just don't stick to uh, z just ZBrush uh, go find your uh, favorite renderer I love Arnold I love uh, Marverick for real time and also Keyshot okay um, let's see I mostly work in ZBrush and Maya already and I want to work in word building but I'm not sure if I need to have a painting or reference the model what exactly do you mean by word building do you mean by uh, like environment artist um, as an environment artist you, you need a different set of um, stuff yeah okay Whoa. when do you prefer us to switch to digital art painting i mean <laughs> i'm not i'm not kind of like saying you should do or do not do whatever you want but i feel that everyone should uh, know the the basics and foundation what foundation when you when you look at some people coming out of some schools um uh, like you see the foundation is very very strong and if they wanted to switch to digital 3d or 2d or whatever they can so definitely concentrate on um, that okay I want to work on environment art okay so for the environment art I'm not environment artist but the thing is still you you need to know about architecture you need if you wanted to do a real-time uh, environment you need to know software like substance designer and painter that's it okay so thank you very very much everyone i'm sorry uh, about uh, what happened <laughs> we kind of like started a, a an hour late but I'm still happy that it's uh, we did our first stuff uh, thank you very much everyone uh, please uh, let me know about the uh, names be in contact uh, you can um, just uh, send a direct message to my um, um, Instagram Instagram is is something that you can kind of like connect with me and if you have something I usually I usually go for um, if I don't have time I'm also saying that please remind me in a week or two weeks or something and no matter who you are I would like to give something back into the community so um, that's that's awesome thank you so much magda um fernando everyone and i hope uh, um, everyone have a good time around the world thank you so much and bye